uh, a lot of country fans down here, right? Yeah. So you always see a lot of guys yeah, with cowboy absolutely. hats. Yep. And, you know, they do a lot of car shows here, and a lot of the owners live out here in Chandler and live in Casa Grande, where there's a lot of a lot of farming going on. But, you know, rodeo is something we don't get a chance to talk a lot about, even though we know about it. It's July 4th up in Prescott, it's one of the best yeah. times of the year. People love to get out of the heat. I've been going up there for years just for the rodeo. I couldn't tell you anything about it, but I know it's a good time, and I love country music. And joining us now is the CEO of the Hondu Rodeo Fest, which is going on Thursday, Friday, Saturday at at Chase Field. This is a huge deal, especially with the rodeo and then uh, some music to go along, like Hank Jr. and Brooks and Dunn, as well as Zach Brown Band and my favorite, Old Dominion. Uh, it's, it's a huge event, million-dollar rodeo. It's the Super Bowl of rodeo. And James Trawick joins us here on location. So is this something that uh, it's been in the works for, for a long time, or is this something that's kind of an annual thing that it, it maybe goes to different markets? Yeah, it's been in the works for a little over two years. We tried to make this thing happen in 2023 and just could not put the pieces of the puzzle together. But this has been a dream for of ours, a collective group for a very long time, you know, putting something like this, of this scale together for the sport of rodeo. And, uh, in the last year and a half, we, we, you know, were able to put together all of the production elements, the bands. The bands was probably the most difficult part, getting talent that at that level, yeah. which is what you have to do. If you're going to step into something as big as Chase Field, you really have to bring the musical talent to sell the tickets. And how do you get both the, the PRCA and the PBR here together? So what we did is put up a million dollar purse okay. and uh, we're that'll not going to that'll, that'll do it. That'll do it. <laughs> so this is a non sanctioned event. In other words, the money won at this event doesn't count towards world standings at the PRCA or the PBR. This is a standalone uh, rodeo event and the, and the contestants in the bull riding specifically are coming from the PBR and the PRCA. So really there is no other place that you're going to get to see this type of head to head competition in, in the bull riding itself. And talk about the head to head, the yeah. level yeah. of competition in these bull riders. So in the bull riders, yes, is, there's, um, I, for, I, I know the stat for the total. There's over 70 world championship titles that are represented among all of our contestants. Mm -hmm. Bull riding, I know there's a, there's more than 10 among the 12. So it's going to be an incredible an incredible experience. So not just the bull riding, but the animal athletes as well. Gord McCoy is our stock contractor, and he's bringing the back-to-back -back world champion buck and bull riding solo. Wow! So not only are you going to get to see the best of the of the uh, rodeo contestants, but in animal athletes too. So do you rank the bulls oh, during absolutely. the year? <laughs> they keep their own stats yeah. all year long. They're competing they for a first. Yeah. 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 There That's was right. a there was a bull many years ago, and I thought I had its name in my head, but I I can't remember it. But nobody could ever write it. And it was, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago now, but it was a bull that threw off everybody. everybody. And they celebrated the bull because the bull was that good. You just couldn't touch him. It could have been, depending on how far back, Bushwhacker, Bodacious. There's some bulls. Bodacious. Was it Bodacious? That's yeah, it. He was a bad, bad man. Bad mother. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was. I mean, it's, it's interesting. Do you still save do you still save the bull riding for the very last event? Did they still do That's that? Right. And yeah. keep everybody yeah. around. I mean, I loved it you know, growing up, going in that. Those bulls, it's like, oh my gosh, can anybody hang on? But what 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 causes a guy to grow up wanting to be a bull rider? <laughs> what causes a guy to grow up want to be a UFC fighter or motor? Yeah, you know, yeah, it's just that deal. it's that pursuit of adrenaline, and and you you grow up around within our sport, you've got all of these, you know, team rope and tie down, uh, bronc ride, and all this different stuff. But you know, I've been around the motocross crew, I've yeah. been around some UFC fighters. They're a lot alike when it comes to wow. the to the bull riders that they have that mentality. Growing up. I always admired, and I told this story earlier on the show, so I'm not going to retell the story. Thank you. But <laughs> make it quick, Jimmy. Yeah, I will. Go. But I always wanted to be a clown. Oh yeah. Yeah, because I admired them, and the I maybe it's the sense of danger because you're trying to attract that ball away from the rider that it just threw. That's right. And then you got to get into the bucket before it rips your head <laughs> off. How? I, how, are those guys, are, are they sane? That's what I want to know. They're they're an integral part of the show. They are. They are absolutely an integral part of the show. And there's two different types. There's a protection team. Okay. Those guys, they're working. They're not necessarily engaging with the crowd. You do have an entertainment factor in the clown that is engaging with the in arena a rodeo announcer. He's talking about, you know, what, what who's about to ride, what the story is on the animal, what the story is on the cowboy. But then there's also two people, and in some cases three, that are strictly focused on, 
when that guy bucks off, we're coming in to draw the attention of that bull. Sure. And, the, and the idea is to continue to move that animal in a direction he's already headed so that that cowboy has time to crawl away. Okay. All right. So one, one more quick quote, because I'm fascinated by bull riding. Sure. I always have been. So when a guy gets bucked, so the protection team is the first person there. Then the clown tries to distract the bull and lead the bull away. Most time, the clown stays out of out of that equation. Okay. The two gets the hell out of the way. Right yeah. now, <laughs> they're they're down there on the ground, first line of defense. I've seen they're them. the first. Then you would see them in the program who the clowns were. And you That's look right. at their background, athlete, football player, oh, yeah. uh, this guy, that guy. I mean, just there's some serious athletes on that on that turf. There's not a whole lot. So you go in the locker room, these guys getting ready. There's no, not a whole lot of difference in that in professional sports where they're taping up their ankles. Yeah. They're putting on their knee braces. Yep. They've got their rib protection on. You know, these guys going in and they mean business. There's no – this is something that, you know, the, there there's other men's lives on the line sure. hypothetically and they're signing up for that job and it's a it's a heavy responsibility see i think that's the most important point right there right. what you just spoke about they're there to try to save that guy's life that's right if he gets hung up a spur gets hung his hand gets hung he gets knocked unconscious yeah somebody's got to be right there on top of it so james this is a big undertaking for m myself being a marketing and a sponsorship guy and in operations right for you guys to put on this event and then have a concert Kind of walk us through the process of the day. Because one ticket gets you it all. Gets That's you right. the rodeo and gets you the concert every single night, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Kind of walk us through that. That's right. And before all of that gets going at 2 o'clock, we've got a street festival. So we've got live music outside on 4th Street, just oh, outside the plaza okay. on, so, by the box office. So, and is that every day? Every day, all three days. Yep. Wow. Heading to vendors, perfect. food and beverage that, you know, it's going to be a great time for families. And the idea is there's there's some families that can't afford to buy the ticket. They maybe have, you know, six or seven kids or something like that. So we wanted to create an experience where everybody in town could come participate in some kind of way. So there's live music, uh, picture ops, uh, you know, you can take a picture with a bull, with a uh, longhorn, stuff like that. But uh -huh. the doors are going to open at five. Okay. Rodeo is going to start at six. It's a two hour rodeo. So it'll go from six to eight. All the rodeo action will be over. We'll have uh, an opening act that's, well, we have a DJ in between, okay. right? But then we'll have an opening act that starts at 8.30, and then a headlining act that takes us all the way to 11.30. Wow. That's a so, great that's day. A, that's night. a great day. And, and again, uh, it, it deserves being repeated. Hank Williams Jr. That's right. Bert Brooks and Dunn. Zach Brown band and their opening act is Old Dominion. I mean, which <laughs> yeah, that, them and their touring would sell out. They're touring as headliners. Uh, you know, same for Turnpike Troubadours, depending on where you go. Oh, yeah, in Oklahoma, they're, they're Texas, yeah. they'll sell twenty or thirty thousand tickets by themselves. And and Whiskey Myers, uh, you know, you're, for Hank you're you like a good uh, kind of alt country, a little bit of southern rock. Whiskey uh -huh. Myers is your is your band. Cover all bases. So I know, That's I know right. you, you go to the website and you see the different types of tickets. Sure. And, you know, I've seen Billy Joel there. I've seen a lot Two. of different, you know, bands that have come through Chase. Is there an ideal area? If you, if you, if you're at, you, everybody knows where home plate is, you know, where center field is, right? Is the stage next to center field stage is in center field and okay. it's actually positioned exactly like the Billy Joel stage okay. was positioned. Okay. And, and this, when it comes to the floor seats or a floor seating. So the deal with our event, you cannot be on the floor during the rodeo. Okay. Right. We <laughs> please. Yeah. yeah. Unless you're a clown like <laughs> we Jim. built out me. <laughs> yeah. We built out some uh, really incredible suites that are attached to the perimeter of the arena. Uh -huh. So okay. you can. There is an opportunity for you to have that type of access. But you buy your ticket. You sit in the bowl. You can sit on third base side, right base side. The buck and shoots are going to be over by first base side. The timed event. So team roping, mm -hmm. tie down, breakaway roping. That's all going to come out of the third base side. Everything's coming to the middle of the arena. There really isn't a bad seat. Right. But the stage is center field. So any of that, just like you would think for your normal concert seating, you buy your ticket, you get to take in the rodeo, the concerts immediately follow. You have the opportunity to buy a floor pass upgrade for all three nights, which does get you on the field in front of the stage. OK. And those are still available on the website. I, when you just described there. So you have the bull riders coming off of the first baseline. The ropers coming off of the third baseline. You have a stage, but you will bring out to assemble 
How long did it take for your team to put together this entire operation to make it work? And how time consuming was it for you? A year, over a year. Wow. Of planning and working and reshaping CAD designs and, and trying to figure out how to create a flow with all of it. Uh huh. It was quite the undertaking. Literally like a Super Bowl. Exactly. Literal Super Bowl. Exactly. There's a lot of moving parts. And thankfully, the, you know, rodeo's not new. There's a lot of people that have done this and paved the way in a lot of ways. This is our unique spin on something, something as legendary as rodeo. So we're going to probably get in trouble for this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> Hondu. Hondo. 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 Yes, sir. Hondo. What does that stand for? The so, Hondo. You know a rope, right? You, you, a lariat or a lasso, something that you use in the pasture okay. to catch a cow. Yep. The eye that the rope feeds through. So yes. it makes it functional. This is the this is called the Hondo. This is the something Hondo. that's known Hondo. to the endemic crowd. And then from the outside crowd, it's something short. It's something that you won't forget. And we wanted to be able to create something unique that would work in both directions. The Hondo RodeoFest.com, by the way. The, Correct. the Hondo rodeofest.com and so you, all right, one more time because i think it's important for those even myself that's going on saturday you're you get down there early if you're bringing your family to see yes. all the things that are going on in the street and stuff like that but you're saying doors open around five doors are at five yes the rodeo kicks off at six, six. but don't forget the street festival at two o'clock every o'clock. single day okay wow. that's important and then concerts will start around 8 30 8 30 okay. correct yeah that's great because a lot of a lot of shows, they won't tell you the times. Mm -hmm. They want you to get you there, yeah. and, you know, and, right. and spend between, money drinking, yeah, and eating. <laughs> so in between, in between the rodeo and the concert, it's basically just I want to say free for all, but you can go around and all the the vending will be open and stuff like that. Vending so. will be open. Yes, get up, stretch your legs, use the restroom, grab a cold beer, come back. Uh, we'll have a DJ, and we've got some other programming. It's Veterans Day weekend, and we're honoring uh, veterans during that time period we partnered with veterans of foreign wars so we're telling a story of a veteran uh that served overseas he's going to be in the building uh with his family and some others and so it's going to be a really special time you will not want to miss the programming that we have planned for the for the in-between rodeo and concert you have any it's of the awesome. old time star cowboys coming back for for this event any of the bull riders any of the you a lot know, of them the Broncos. Valley, you know, they may I come mean, on their own yeah. Yeah, no, they'll be in the crowd. They won't be. Uh, for the most part, the idea for this event is that it is the best of the best that's competing sure. right now. Yep. So the first invites that we made at the beginning of this was 2023 world titles. Like they won the world in 2023. And then on from that, it was who had the uh, steepest pedigree? Who's won the world the most times? Who's wow. won the national finals? Average titles more times than others. And so we went down the list of who would be uh, the best you know, who, how could we put together the best cast of characters, so to speak, to present the best three nights the rodeo has to offer? Because you go to these other events, they're like Rodeo Houston, for example, it's one of the biggest rodeos in the world and it spans 18 days. It's really an incredible thing and they do amazing things for the city of Houston and especially youth and agriculture. But when it comes to rodeo, you buy a ticket, you want to see what we wanted to do to set a ton, to set it, set ourselves apart is have those world champions every single night. Yeah. There's really only other two other places that you can go get that. It's the American in Fort Worth in mm -hmm. the spring, the National Finals Rodeo in Las Vegas. Yeah. And the, and then and now our event. We're bringing this and we hope to stay in the Phoenix market for a very long time. I've gone to the uh, Las Vegas event yes, and sir. it is tremendous as well, but I can't wait to see what you're going to do in a baseball stadium, which seats mm. almost 50,000. And people. how much dirt did you say they're bringing in? <laughs> <laughs> 2,000 yards of dirt. It Damn. took 150 trucks to get that dirt in the house. Wow. Two, foot deep, two feet deep, is that what you're saying? In the arena. Yes, sir. That's right. So is there like monster truck deal next week? <laughs> <laughs> there needs to be. If you know a guy deal? with monster truck, I'll do a sweet deal on some dirt <laughs> next year because <laughs> the weekend after me. <laughs> That'd be the way to go, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. But, hey, James, thanks for coming down here. We really appreciate you. I think uh, yep. one last question. When it comes to when you think of Arizona sure. and when it comes to the rodeo industry, where do we rank? You know, you think Wyoming, you think Texas. Are, I mean, we top five. Are we getting there? Or is this a growing market when it comes to rodeo? Yeah, I'd say, I'd say it's a growing market, and I think that that's why we chose to come here. We looked all over the United States, and I think that, that rodeo is uh, – there's no gaps in the market in Texas and Oklahoma, let me put it that way. Uh, when you look at new opportunity, uh, there's a lot more of it in the West than there is the East. Yeah. And so when we look at, so we started looking at markets. You have to, you have to find a, 
a, a space that's this big. It needs a roof. It needs, mm -hmm. you know, local uh, economy that's thriving. And Phoenix is. And so it was a very attractive place. And then let me just tell you, the people at, the, at Chase Field, for the Diamondbacks organization, have been incredible to work with yeah. at every single turn. And every I'm talking level, about right? from Derek the top Hall, all, the, all way the way to the bottom. Yep. And it doesn't matter. They have been incredible partners in this. And that was a big deciding factor early on for us. We made those phone calls and connected with them. They, uh, it was an easy decision. So we're excited to be in Phoenix. Like I said, we hope to be here for a very long time. And thank you very much for having me on today. Absolutely. Chance, good yeah. stuff. The CEO of the Honda Rodeo Festival. Again, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday at Chase Field. You get everything up on the website. And uh, we will uh, – we're we'll talk to him during the break to see if he'll throw us a couple tickets to give away to somebody. That'd be cool. Ah, uh, we, we might can work something. We All can right, let's get that out, man. We're gonna hit hit the boss for some tickets. So <laughs> Come we'll on. do that. We'll do that uh, next as we continue from the Trophy Bar. It's Rocky Manu to Jimmy B. Fox Sports nine ten. Clear standard amount of bucks. Not cut it.